All right, so for this next part, we're going to get our creeper to move around a little bit. Let's go ahead and add a new program to our project. We'll call this walk test. So we're using the bottom motors now. Those are the large motors, and those are B and C. We've got our setup kind of like a tank tread. So let's go down to the action section, grab move tank. And right now these are set at 75% power for motors B and C. You can see that motors B and C. I'm going to change these to 20% and 20%. And the main reason for this is with the EV3 Educational Edition, the treads don't have a whole lot of traction. Um, they don't generate a whole lot of friction. So if you move them too fast, they just kind of, it's like you're spinning your wheels. We'll set this to three rotations. And let's just go ahead and download and run to see if this works. worked out pretty pretty nice. Let's change that to negative three to get our creeper back into position. I'm just going to start using the play button here. That works out pretty nicely. I'm noticing that he's not a hundred percent in alignment. He goes forward a little bit, he comes back, and when he comes back he's not quite heading in exactly the same direction. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. We've got our creeper moving forward and back. Let's uh, let's see if we can get him to rotate. So let's set the second one to negative 20. And we're just going to set this to one rotation. So the first one, motor B, is set to 20% power. Motor C is set to negative 20. And then we're doing one rotation. Hopefully he'll move about a quarter turn. That was close. That wasn't quite a quarter turn. Good. Get him, get him back into position. That looks pretty nice. Okay, so we know roughly how to get him to for go forward, go back, and how to do a quarter or ninety degree turn. Let's see if we can mash those two together. So let's go ahead, and grab that move tank block down in the action section. And we'll have him turn first, and then we'll have him go forward. So. 20% motor B, negative 20 on motor C, and we'll do one rotation. And then for the walking forward part, we're going to set these to, yeah, sure, we'll keep that at 20% power for both of them, and three rotations. So hopefully he should turn about a quarter turn and then go forward three rotations. Let's see if that works. That looked pretty good. So if I do this three more times, then he should end up in roughly the same position he was before. Let's go. Let's go ahead and just do that. We'll run this three more times. So that works out pretty nicely. He's not in the exact same position. If you notice that he's not turning enough, then you could set this to 1.1 rotations, and that's just going to continue the turning process a little bit longer. If you notice that he's not turning, or he's, he's turning too much, then you can set this to 0.9, and he'll turn a little bit less. So if you notice on the turn that he's not turning enough, or he's turning too much, you can adjust that. If you notice that when he's walking forward that, you know, he's moving a little bit too too far to the left or to the right, you can try setting this to 18 and leaving the other one at 20, and that way that'll cause the treads attached to motor B to spin just a little bit less, with a little bit less power. So he might turn a little bit less in one direction, and he might turn a little bit more. So you can mess with these two options on the walk forward section if you need to get him to walk a little straighter. If it's a little bit off, though, don't worry about it too much unless... You've got an extremely important creeper perimeter walk that you need to have happen. So this works, but you know we have to hit the play button each time. Let's go ahead and add a loop. So I'm just going to grab the loop from the loop block from the flow control section. I'm just going to put it at the very end, and I'm going to click and drag over my two other blocks that are in there, the motor blocks. I'm just going to drag these into my loop. So if I wanted this to go forever and ever and ever until the end of time and just, you know, until the batteries ran out. This would work perfectly. This would just keep him going and going. He'd never stop. But if I just wanted him to do one, one, you know, perimeter walk, you know, 
go forward, turn right four times, or turn left, depending on how you have it set up. You'd click on the loop modifier here, go down to count, how many times does it take to get back to where you are, four. Let's go ahead and see if this works. So I think on mine, he's not turning quite enough. So I'm going to set this to 1.1 and see if that helps at all. Run this again. I think that worked out quite nicely. So one of the things to note is if you're doing this on a really hard surface and then you move over to carpeting, especially with the, the EDU version of the treads, you know, these settings might work really well for your hard surfaced floor, but then when you go to the, the carpeting, it might be very, very different. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a gyro sensor, you can use that. We'll get into sensors a little bit later. And that can allow you to make really nice 90 degree turns without having too much of an issue or worrying, you know, how many rotations or what power settings do I need to use. But that's a, that's a whole nother story. So let's, let's go ahead and try and combine these two. We've got the walk test and we've got the head test. So let's do something simple. We'll just go back to our head test section and you can either grab these three blocks and you can go to the, to the edit menu and copy or control C or command C and then you can paste them in the walk test section. But we'll just go ahead and recreate that here for right now. So let's see, medium motor A, I'm gonna set that at 30% power and I'm gonna use that copy and paste thing so I don't have to grab it each time. So again, you can go to the edit menu and then do copy, or you can just click on your block, command C, and then command V. If you're on a PC, that'd be control C and control V. So I've got three motor blocks here. That first one, he rotates to the left, get him to rotate in the other direction, and then centered. So all these are at 30% power. First one's at one rotation, second one's at negative two rotations, and the third one's at one rotation. So if I just click and drag, drop them at the very end, then each time he goes forward and turns right or turns left, he should stop for a second and look around. Let's see if this works. I think that worked out pretty nicely. I think that's about it for this this section. I think in the next section we'll add a light sensor just to get some really basic input going. I think that's about it.